Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. In the last video on the topic of the rapture, I shared that Hymenaeus and Philetus were wrong about the rapture. They had made an error concerning the truth. The truth being that there is a resurrection, but the resurrection that they were to expect as taught by Apostle Paul has not occurred yet. Just for clarity, they were correct about a resurrection occurring, just was not the one they were to expect. Hymenaeus and Philetus said that the resurrection had passed already. There was indeed a resurrection, and we noted it from Matthew 27 verses 50 through 53, and it connects to the resurrection of Christ on the Feast of First Fruits. We see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 23 and 24. This resurrection is referred to as the barley harvest. This is because the agricultural barley harvest is connected to the Feast of First Fruits. There are some who believe that the rapture is the barley harvest. Yet when we review the Leviticus 23 feasts foreshadowing Christ and how he fulfills these appointed times, these feasts, we can see the specific role of barley is connected to the feast of first fruits. So at this point, we can see within scripture up to two resurrection of groups of people so far because there is a third. Through the course of this review of scripture, you will see how many of us can see why there's a resurrection before the tribulation and many see a resurrection at the end of the tribulation. The rapture, which is the next resurrection upcoming, is before the tribulation. The rapture is a pre-trib event. Yet, the distinction I'm trying so hard to relay is that the rapture is not only a resurrection, but that it's special. With the barley harvest of the Old Testament saints in Matthew 27, 50 through 53, only the righteous dead were resurrected. When the rapture occurs, the wheat harvest, because it's associated with Pentecost, which involves the harvest of wheat, the rapture involves not only the dead in Christ being resurrected, but also the living at the time. And we see this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57. The resurrection of the fruit harvest and we will get into that into another video. But for those that want to look ahead, read Revelation chapter 14, verses 15 through 20. There is a definite harvest and a definite reference to grapes. This is the fruit harvest. The last of the three agricultural harvests of the Leviticus 23 feasts, the resurrections correspond with these three feasts. No date, no hour of when the harvest is gathered, but it is associated with the harvest season of that feast. Just like we don't know how long after Christ was resurrected that the Old Testament saints were resurrected, we just know through scripture that it's associated with the first fruits in which the barley is the harvest of that particular feast. Remember, 1 Corinthians 15, 23 through 24 details that time frame. Same with Pentecost. The church began there, but the harvest part of it, the gathering unto the Lord associated with this particular feast has not occurred yet. It doesn't mean that the rapture occurs on the day of Pentecost, but it is associated with the time span of its harvest season. Same with the fruit harvest associated with tabernacles. Lastly, this parable appears to be associated with this topic, Matthew 
chapter 13, verse 33. And this is a parable that Jesus spoke about the woman in the three measures of meal. Look at this. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. See, three parts to the whole, three parts to what we refer to as the first resurrection, because it's a resurrection to life. Scripture details that afterwards, the rest of the dead did not live again until after the thousand years of the millennial reign. Revelation 20 and verse five says, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Then we see in Revelation chapter 20 verses 12 through 15 that when the dead are resurrected here, they are judged. And if they were not found to be written in the book of life, they will be cast into the lake of fire for the second death. I just want folks to see that this is not a new revelation. It's been there just like the feast days of Leviticus 23 foreshadowing Christ and his fulfillments and also the Revelation 12 sign. It's been there again up to this point. It should be clear that there are multiple mass resurrections, but one happened already. And it's associated with the Feast of First Fruits. And once you see this within Scripture, you'll see how a lot of other things fall into place in regards to end times. As we move on, we can see that the rapture is indeed a resurrection, but not all resurrections are the rapture. The resurrection of the Old Testament saints was not a rapture. It was indeed a gathering where only the righteous dead were resurrected. No living folks were transformed with glorified bodies and went up to heaven at that resurrection. So something else makes this upcoming resurrection different from the previous one. There's a reason why the rapture is not an escape from the tribulation, but from something else. Let's define what makes the rapture so special because there's only one rapture. The first aspect, of course, is the meaning of the word harpazo. And when you define this word and see it in context, it explains itself. And most of us know this Strong's Concordance number G726. Look at this Thayer lexicon definition to seize carry off by force, to seize on, claim for oneself eagerly. Now we understand that the bridegroom and the bride desire to be together. We want to be with Jesus and he wants to be with us. So we can understand the claim for oneself eagerly, right? This is indeed true, yet not the sole reason for the rapture. Let's keep going. The next one says to snatch out or away. You ever wonder why we would be snatched out of the way? The rapture isn't just our gathering unto the Lord. Look at this. The Strong's definitions say this. Catch, away, up, pluck, pull, take by force. Now, the purpose of the rapture is not to escape the tribulation. I will say this again. The purpose of the rapture is not to escape the tribulation. That's the purpose of salvation through Jesus Christ. Those that are saved escape the tribulation, which is the set time for what? The judgments upon the earth due to sin and iniquity. See, Christ paid our sin debt on the cross. When we look at the purpose of the tribulation, it is to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. 
Isn't that what the word of God says in Isaiah 26, 21? Let's go there. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall also disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. The word even points it out here too. Isaiah chapter 13, verse nine, behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. See, all due to sin and iniquity in which those in Christ have been redeemed from. So the purpose of redemption through Jesus Christ enables us to be kept from the hour of judgment upon the earth. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, the Lord says, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now, I shared all of that to get to this. We know that the rapture is a rescue, but clearly it's not from the tribulation. It would have been a gathering, just like the Old Testament saints. But the rapture is an emphasis on how this gathering unto the Lord occurs. I'll say it again. The rapture is an emphasis on how this gathering is unto the Lord. By a snatching, a seizing, it's gathered with an urgency. Again, it's this sense of urgency in which these folks, us, are gathered within this particular resurrection. Remember when the barley harvest was resurrected? It's debatable whether they appeared into the holy city as Jerusalem upon the earth or the one in heaven. But watch this. If it was the one on the earth, they were in no hurry before they ended up in heaven. If they walked around and visited family and friends before they went on to glory, there was no relative urgency. See it now? With the rapture, ain't no time for that. So let's get into what the urgency is. It has nothing to do with the tribulation. The rapture doesn't happen during the tribulation. It happens before the tribulation. And here's why the rapture is the rapture, a gathering unto the Lord with an urgency. Look at this in Revelation 12. Many of you already know about this passage of scripture. In this video, I just want to point out why the church, the body of Christ, is gathered so quickly. For those that don't understand Revelation 12, I will cover it in another video. To simplify it, for those that don't understand the symbolism, the signs, and those signs, those precursors have a dual manifestation. This means that the sign happens first, the warning of what's about to happen, then the actual event happens. I will say this again because it's extremely important. The sign happens first, the warning of what's about to happen, then the actual event happens. It is these events that create the urgency for which the next gathering of souls unto the Lord is called the rapture. I'm placing emphasis on so much here because I want you to get it. I want you to understand this church. And here's a brief on the physical manifestation of all this. In Revelation 12 verses 1 and 2, there's a ramp up of activity in Israel that further sets the stage for the end times. It will be drastically significant. There is also a reference to the time of year that this happens, the Feast of Trumpets time frame. This has already happened. The physical manifestation of Revelation 12 verses 1 and 2 
points to the date that these series of events began. And that date was September 23rd and 24th of 2017. Okay. Now, in Revelation 12, 3, the physical manifestation of this, look, a new world government forms up and Satan is behind it. Remember, this is the physical manifestation of this sign that was in the heavens a few years back. It's a wonder, a warning, a sign that this is what comes next. This is the beast system that the Antichrist eventually rises from. The church is raptured before the Antichrist is revealed. We know this has a physical manifestation as it is detailed within Revelation 13 verses 1 and 2 and Daniel chapter 7. Yet this is another confirmation of it in verse 3 which locks in the time frame that these events begin. The significance is that it is connected to the event of the Feast of Trumpets in 2017. And it serves as a starting point from which this new world government forms up afterwards. And since 2017, now we can see the framework is set and it's moments away from actually happening. Now, in Revelation 12, verse 4, Satan sends his fallen angels to the earth. Are they masquerading as aliens making contact? I'm not sure of the time span between the Revelation 12.3 and 12.4 events, but whatever it is, around this same time, there's a positioning against the body of Christ. I'm not sure how or if these fallen angels influence the new world government, but the fact is that Satan sends them down. When we get to the part to devour the child as soon as it is born, what that looks like will be clear the closer we get to it. We should all understand that this birth is when the believers in Christ receive our glorified bodies. So it's another verse hinting at the rapture when we are redeemed. Now, when we are born again, we are born again in the spirit, yet our bodies have not been redeemed yet. This occurs on the day of redemption. It's a birthday. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53 real quick. Apostle Paul says this, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. When we get to Revelation 12, verse 5, the physical manifestation of this verse is the rapture. For the rest of Revelation chapter 12, there are no more heavenly signs that have corresponding physical manifestations. Again, I must share that Revelation 12 is a parenthetical chapter. It details the transition into the time of Jacob's trouble. The rapture is part of the story, not the focus. The urgency connected to the rapture is connected to something Satan is doing in Revelation 12, 4. This is why the rapture is a rescue. It's from something Satan is doing and the body of Christ is rescued from it. So I got to say this again. This is not some new revelation. It's equivalent to how we had never heard of the seven feasts of Leviticus 23 and how these foreshadowed that Jesus Christ will fulfill them all. We can now see how relevant this is with all of the scriptures to back it up. It's the same with the resurrections that correspond to the agricultural harvests of the feasts, except when the wheat is harvested, there's an urgency connected to a threat from Satan. Okay. So what is the point of all of this? To assure you that when all of this goes down, 
God is still in control. That's why there's a rescue plan. Otherwise, there would just be a gathering still going. It's just the urgency surrounding it. The blessed hope will still happen. You got to know that it will not be in the tribulation when it happens. It's in the word of God. It's clear as day. Still a pre-tribulation rapture. And it happens before the revealing of the Antichrist. Scripture is pointing out that we will see the transition into the tribulation, but not the tribulation itself. This is the most difficult type of sharing. We've all had this expectation that the rapture could happen at any moment. However, there is scriptural evidence of otherwise. God has the ability to send Jesus Christ for us at any time. Yet there is a set time, season and reason for a gathering of folk unto the Lord known as the rapture. The rapture has a dual purpose, a gathering unto the Lord as a harvest and also a rescue from the wiles of the devil. Still a fig tree generation time frame, folks. This doesn't change the time frame that we expect this to happen. Just the observation of preceding events. We just need to be ready at all times for the appearing of the Lord. I know this is a lot. A matter of prayer for confirmation and an understanding of the aforementioned scriptures. Well, there is no return to normalcy, but there is a return to Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you there. This whole watch is about confirming what the Lord says will happen. This will not continue to go on. Yet many folks believe that this experience is just another cycle in the history of man. But on the contrary, cycles begin and cycles end. And the Bible tells us that we're at the end of this cycle. The Lord is going to finish some things and make an end of others. Look right there, Daniel 9, 24, that whole plan. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make a reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. There's a consequence to sin and iniquity and there is a time span dedicated to judgment upon the earth. However, God has offered reconciliation for iniquity through his son, Jesus Christ. And he died on the cross for our sins and was buried and resurrected on the third day for us. Just like scripture says, we've offended God through our sin, but we can have a restored relationship with God by believing in the finished work on the cross. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 2 Peter 3 and 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. See, people think, this ain't gonna happen. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Soon is the day of redemption, and we're looking forward to it. Afterwards is the day of the Lord, and that's a time period of wrath. Yet those that are in Christ are not appointed to it. 1 Thessalonians says it, chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but what? To obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, 
we should live together with him. All right. You know I love you. But realize that God loves you more. So much more. Listen to what Jesus said about how much God loves you. Right there, John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hmm. There's that reconciliation for iniquity. All right. Till we meet again. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.